Hi everyone, Grant K here for the Smoke Learning Channel. A workflow quite common with CGI is working with render passes. In this video, we're going to be creating a motion vector render pass for Autodesk Smoke. The purpose of the motion vector render pass is to be able to add motion blur to the CG renders at the compositing stage. This will once again give you the ultimate flexibility. For my 3D application, I have chosen Autodesk Maya 2012 and I'm using the Mental Ray rendering engine. Here we have an animated scene of a rolling marble that represents our CG animation that either you or your CG artists have prepared. In order to get the passes out of Maya, you would prepare your settings for the render. This could include render layers and assigning various parts of your scene to be rendered. Now to set up the render, we need to go to the render settings window. The first thing to ensure is that we are using the mental ray renderer. There are a series of tabs and we will start off in the common tab. If I scroll down to the bottom of the window, we can set the render resolution for the frames. I am using 720p HD for this example. Scrolling back to the top of the common tab, we will select the image format. In order to get the most image information across to Autodesk Smoke, we will use the OpenEXR format. This is considered the high dynamic range format for moving pictures. You'll note that there is a bit depth error at the bottom of the screen and we'll fix this shortly. The last important detail in the common tab is the file naming. Maya is defaulted to creating a multi-channel OpenEXR with everything embedded in one file. Now this can certainly be handy in certain circumstances, but most situations people prefer separate render passes for a variety of production pipeline reasons. There is no option in the interface to tell Maya to make separate render passes per channel. However, the way to do it is to right-click on the naming box and choose the pop-up menu. We can select Insert Pass Name. When the token is added to the file naming, Maya will automatically split out the render passes to separate files. Now let's set up the quality and bit depth of the render. We'll switch to the Quality tab and you can use one of the production presets and tweak them to your liking. Scrolling to the bottom of the window, we will find the Frame Buffer option. Inside this menu, we can set the bit depth for the OpenEXR. At the moment, the data type is set to 8 bits per channel. In the pull-down menu, we will set the bit depth to 16 bits per channel. This is more than adequate for our needs. And finally, we can now begin to define our render passes. Switch to the Passes tab in the Render Settings window. For the purposes of this example, we are only going to create a Beauty Pass and a Motion Vector Pass. However, you can create as many types of passes at the same time, depending on your requirements. The first step is to add the render pass to the scene. Click Create New Render Pass and the window will appear. In the list, select 2D Motion Vector. Click Create and Close. The render pass now needs to be associated with the render layer. Click the button to associate the render pass with the render layer and the render pass moves to the associated passes window. Let's do a test render to review the render pass. Open the render view window using the button at the top of the interface. In the window, we will click the render menu and choose to render the camera output. Mental Ray begins to render the current frame and the first thing we see is the beauty pass. To see the motion vector pass, click the file menu, load render pass and choose MV2D Toxic. On the Mac, this brings up a new window that displays the motion vector pass. 
This might vary if you're using Maya on a Windows box. Now looking at the motion vectors, red is horizontal movement, green is vertical, and yellow is a combination of the two movements. Mental Ray has rendered this vector pass in 16-bit absolute values. This means that the motion vector values can go beyond the normalized values of 0 and 1. So there are values that go beyond black and beyond white. This will influence the direction of the motion blur. Once you're happy with what we've got, we can then execute a batch render and then bringing the result render passes into smoke and apply the effects. Here on the smoke desktop, we have the open EXR render passes which were dragged into the application through the wiretap gateway. To make use of the motion vector pass, we will go to the Flame Effects 2 menu and choose the motion blur module. This tool was part of the Smoke 2012 Subscription Advantage Pack. We will set the module to load a front and forward vector render pass. In the Motion Blur module, we'll play the Beauty Pass to see what the original looks like. Now if we stop at a point of movement, we can switch between the original and the motion vector inputs. Remember what I said. The motion vectors are rendered as absolute values and this is set up in the module. Looking back at the result view, we can switch on the vectors to view the direction of the motion. We can adjust the grid and scale to get a good representation of what we can apply to the frames. Now, there are a variety of settings to apply motion blur. We'll just use samples motion blur and I'll set the value to 1. We'll go to the beginning and I'll play back a few frames and we can see the result of the applied motion blur. Here we have the before and the after. Remember that rendering is a science in its own right, so be particular about the render settings you use. They will differ between 3D applications and rendering engines. For more information about Autodesk Smoke, or to download the free 30-day trial copy, just go to autodesk.com forward slash smoke for Mac. I'm Grant K for the Smoke Learning Channel. Thanks for watching and see you again real soon.